Hi, it's Coyle. My name is Steph, and we're going to talk about Nanaimo bars today. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Sinanewalk First Nation. The Sinanewalk First Nation have been on this land for thousands of years and still live here. We are grateful to the elders and cultural knowledge keepers who have been generous in sharing the Sinan wild, sacred teachings, and sinews, traditional values, with us as we learn and grow. Siet Sinanewalk. Thank you, Sinanewalk. The Nanaimo Bar is an iconic dessert. It's creamy, crunchy, and chocolatey all in one. We're gonna make a pan today and we're gonna talk a little bit about the history, even some of the controversy surrounding this tasty treat. First, what is a Nanaimo Bar? It's a no-bake, three-layer dessert. There's a chocolate and coconut and nut base, a creamy custard filling, and a molten chocolate top that hardens once it's set. Many families have their own Nanaimo bar recipe that are very specific, and people are very convinced that their recipe is the best and only way. But how did we get here? The Nanaimo bar's history is shrouded in uncertainty. There are plenty of recipes as far back as the 1920s and 30s for chocolate fridge cakes they're not quite exactly what we're talking about today. This fundraiser cookbook from the Women's Auxiliary to the Nanaimo Hospital is from 1952. It features a recipe from Mrs. Mary Nash for her chocolate squares. Now the name isn't right, but if we look at the recipe, a lot of the ingredients are on the right track and the method is really similar to modern Nanaimo bar recipes today. Let's get baking. This is a recipe adapted from Joyce Hardcastle's version. Even we can't resist changing things up a little. First, we need to gather our ingredients and tools. This is a no-bake dish, but we do need a little bit of heat. We're going to need a square dish, a saucepan, bowls, a rolling pin, a cutting board, measuring cups, spatula, fork, electric beaters or a whisk, and a couple of knives. Our ingredients are butter, sugar, cocoa, egg, graham wafers, ground almonds, coconut, cream, custard powder, icing sugar, and semi-sweet chocolate. Let's make the bottom layer. First, we need to crush up the graham crackers into uniform crumbs. Parchment paper is really useful for keeping everything in one place and keeping those crumbs from getting all over the table. also makes it really easy to pour it out into the measuring cup. We're going to need about a cup and three quarters. Now I have a small saucepan here with a bit of water simmering inside because we're going to use a double boiler to melt the butter, sugar, and cocoa together. The bowl goes on top of the simmering water without touching it and the steam is enough to heat up the butter and melt it together. Give it a stir every now and then just to make sure it's evenly melting. You can see how nice and liquidy it is. I'm going to add the egg. That melted chocolate is hot, so if I add it all at once to the egg, the egg is going to scramble. We don't want scrambled eggs in our Nanaimo bars, so I'm going to temper the egg by adding a little bit of the hot mixture to the egg, stirring it up, and then mixing it together once they're similar temperatures. Now I can add it all to the bowl, still going a bit slowly. And we can put it right back on the heat to cook it as we stir. Okay, so the egg is all incorporated in. So off the heat, I'm going to add the dry ingredients. I'm going to add graham cracker crumbs, ground almond, and coconut flakes. If you don't want to use nuts due to allergies or you just don't like them very much, you can leave them out, uh, but replace them half and half with more graham crumbs and a bit of flour. Give that a good stir to fully incorporate everything and make sure there's no dry spots left. So we have the square pan and I'm just lining it with a little bit of parchment paper and this is going to help us to remove the Nanaimo bars out of the pan once they're all ready to eat. 
making some creases to make sure that it sticks well. I'm going to pour in our base mixture and it's going to look like way too much to start with because at this point I got worried about the pan. Is it too short? Will it all fit? A flat bottomed measuring cup can be really useful to press down this base nice and firm so that there's no air pockets and so that it is nice and compressed into the bottom of the pan to leave enough room for all of the other layers that we need to add. A spatula can help get those edges nice and straight right up against the edge of the pan as well. Breathe a sigh of relief because the pan is going to be big enough. Now that it's firmly packed, we're going to drop this into the freezer for about 15 minutes so that it will set up before we put the next layer on top. So we've got the ingredients right, but not the name. In 1953, just one year after Mary's recipe went into the hospital cookbook, someone submitted a recipe for Nanaimo bars in the Vancouver Sun's Edith Adams cookbook. Unfortunately, the recipe here isn't credited with someone's name, so we don't know who submitted it. But the name is right, and we have the ingredients all ready to go. In 1986, Nanaimo Mayor Graham Roberts called a contest to find the ultimate Nanaimo bar recipe. Over the course of four weeks, a hundred different submissions came in with different ingredients, different ratios and adjustments. Joyce Hardcastle, with her variation of almonds instead of walnuts, won the whole thing. And her recipe is known as the ultimate nowadays. Since 1986, Nanaimo Bar's popularity has exploded, and families in the area have developed and guarded their own particular recipes with specific ratios of nuts to cocoa and custard to base. Uh, no one can really agree on what is the exact correct and best recipe, but everybody has their own opinion and their own special recipe. Today, locals and tourists alike can follow the Nanaimo Bar Trail, which leads you through the city to try out a whole wide array of different Nanaimo Bar recipes and Nanaimo Bar inspired items like these tea towels. It is highly recommended that you do this over several days. It is a lot of chocolate and a lot of custard. For the second layer, while the base chills, I'm going to add the butter, the custard powder, the icing sugar, and the cream into a bowl. And we're gonna use the beaters for this because it's quite the workout if you do it by hand. It's a lot of icing sugar as well, so I'm gonna make sure to start off really slow so that I don't spray icing sugar everywhere all over the table. The custard powder turns this really neon orangey yellow as it starts to soak up the butter and the cream. Gives it that Nanaimo bar yellow shade. It's gonna look really lumpy and gross and bad, but as you work it, it starts to really get hydrated and then achieve this smooth, consistency that's light and fluffy. All right, it is now nice and light and fluffy. See how yellow it is? That's not just the camera. It is kind of neon. So we pulled out the pan out of the freezer with the base in it and we're gonna add this lovely creamy sugary filling right on top. I'm gonna spread it out nice and smooth so that there's an even layer on top of the base and a flat top for the chocolate to go over top of in the next step. A butter knife really helps, or if you have a spatula that has an angle on it, even better. What did I tell you? The pan is just the right height. This is gonna go back in the freezer again while we make the topping. While it's pretty hard to agree on the right way to make an animal bar, we've gotten pretty good at recognizing the wrong ways. In recent years, there's been a number of out of BC variants to the Nanaimo bar, featured in McDonald's McFlurries, New York Times articles, and Canada Post stamps. Complaints have varied from incorrect ingredients, improper ratios, and horrible custard textures. Bird's custard powder 
It is listed as an essential ingredient in almost every denial of our recipe. Some go so far as to say you don't have birds custard powder in it, it's not an animal one. Others say normal cornstarch works just as well. New York Times published a recipe and article in 2020 featuring this image. A minuscule custard layer, wavy chocolate, and folks were not happy. Some people thought of a lack of custard basically made it a different dessert, and that they cut out the best part of it. On the flip side, Canada Post released a collection of dessert-inspired stamps, and the one they used for the Nanaimo bar featured a giant custard face, which a lot of people were pretty upset about. Canada Post even sent a letter to Nanaimo's mayor, Leonard Crow, to talk about the controversy that this image had caused. BuzzFeed Canada also got on the Nanaimo bar train, but called them Canadian chocolate bars, and created a whole variety of flavor combinations, which some argued are just dessert squares and not the Nile bars. Premier Horgan agreed. So the custard filling is in the freezer setting up. So while that's happening, we're gonna make the chocolate topping. We've got the double boiler out again because we're gonna melt the chocolate and butter together slowly so that it doesn't burn or seize, which means it can get kind of dry and um, clumpy. So as we wait, just keep stirring. Let the heat and the, the steam do its work to heat through the bowl and melt that chocolate. So now that it's kind of melted, we're gonna work quickly and pull the base out of the freezer and pour the liquid chocolate onto the custard. We had to do a second batch of chocolate just to make sure we had enough and we've adjusted the recipe for you. Since the custard is firm from the freezer, the chocolate isn't gonna break through that layer, but sit right on top. I'm gonna smooth it over, and a key step is shaking this back and forth to make sure the chocolate covers in a smooth layer. It gives it that really nice and smooth finish. This is going back in the freezer one more time before we start cutting it up and snacking. All right, let's dig in and give this a try. Now to cut it, we gotta get it out of the pan first. You don't really wanna scratch up your pan. And that's why we have the handy um, parchment paper. It's gonna help us pull it out of the pan. Oh, a bit of problem solving. I'm going to get a butter knife and run it under some hot water and put that butter knife down the edge of the pan to loosen off those two side edges being really careful to cut away from myself at all times. Let's see if this works. Yes! All right, so let's cut into it and see what those layers look on the inside. The outside is always a little bit wavy. So I'm gonna run my knife under some hot water because it helps to cut through the hardened butter and chocolate that's been in the freezer for so long. See if we can get a good cross section here. Oh yes, that looks good. You can also rinse off the knife in between cuts and it'll stop that chocolate from bleeding through onto the next layer. Just gonna chop it up and nice even squares. Looks like we've got a really good balance. According to my preference, I really like this balance of base custard to chocolate. We'll see if anyone else wants to try some. The Nanaimo bar is hard to pin down, it's hard to get right, but it's easy to get oh so very wrong. What do you think? What makes the Nanaimo bar so special? Is it the custard powder? The golden ratio? The almonds versus the walnuts? And why do you think people have such strong connections to special family recipes? 